Welcome to our new Thanksgiving Centerpiece um, DVD. This is a really clever little thing. Each of these little pieces is got a little tab on the bottom of it and they fit into these little clever slots. The way you're going to get the wood is you're going to get it in some pieces. So you're going to get it in the pieces with the feet to attach so you just base everything black. The pieces that you get are going to be made out of a hard, super duper duper hard, um, pressed, I'm not even sure, um, hardboard I think, something like that. And then when you get them, they're going to feel a little bit loose, like the, the guy might seem like he tips just a little bit, but as you paint him, what happens is he gets thicker and thicker. So we wanted to allow for generous base coating. Some people are very heavy handed. If you feel like your piece isn't fitting tight enough, go ahead and slap on a few more coats of varnish on either side and that'll be perfect. Okay, you notice I haven't painted my backside yet. Um, that's going to be on this video. So um, I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to go ahead and list all of the base coats and then we're going to do all of this detail um, on camera so that you can just, and I'm going to try and do it, keep it very simple so we just march straight through the pieces. I'm going to do them in couples because the couples, if you notice, are very, very, um, they're very similar. Their buckskin is the same, their purples are the same, same thing here, their tans are the same their faces are the same color, that kind of thing. So I think that'll work out really well. And of course we'll do the star attraction separately because he's the star. And then our words are exactly the same if you do the bounty or the long Thanksgiving piece. Um, either way, so um, they're just exactly the same treatment. We have gone through a number of um, remanufactures on this to make sure that things like this G where it bends over and stuff like that are really strong enough. And I'll show you some um, nice ways to make sure that you base this so that you can get into all these little grooves. That's um, a little bit of the drag thing with this, but I've got a really good cheat and easy way to, to help you do it. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about what we're going to do first. The very first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and seal all of your surfaces with multi-purpose sealer, all the sides. Okay. And then we're going to base coat the person with the flesh color. And what that's going to do for us is we're going to base around. Now you may have to go back in and patch some of the details, but it's going to mask this dark stuff. And then it's going to allow all the other colors to kind of shine through nicely. Um, it's the easiest way that I've found to do that. So um, let's get started. The very first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to go ahead and seal these pieces. I'm going to use um, a pretty new brush to me. It's called a sash brush. You notice that it's about maybe almost two inches long and it has a really kind of floppy little um, kind of, it's tight up here but flops a little bit more probably due to the length. The nice thing about these um, is they get into these edges really nicely and this kind of domed top does a really good job of base coating and stuff. That's what I'm going to use to base the, um, the words and stuff. So I'm going to load into my bold taper sealer. I'm going to use my nonstick black mat, which is um, awesome. It just cleans up and just clean up is such a snap. I'm going to push it down on the, the surface. And then I'm going to go ahead and get these edges done first. Okay. And that's going to prevent a mess on the back side. Now I have a little bit of a mess over here, but here's what I'm going to do is just smooth it out. And then I'll go back in and I'll just tap it and it'll even out nicely. So this is your first coat that's going to help um, make your piece tighter. There's, If you think about it, there's usually two base coats, a couple varnish coats, both sides, um, sealing, all that kind of stuff. All of these things um, make the piece thicker. Okay, so then I'll just slip slap it to smooth out the multi-purpose sealer, get it worked in there. Okay, just hold on to that. You can see I'm making a lovely big mess, but I don't care because it'll wipe right off. And so that I have paper on my regular tabletop, but then I use the, um, the nonstick mats. You can use them with hot glue guns. You can use them with anything. Okay, so as soon as you think you have it smooth enough, if you want it even smoother, you could go into um, just an oval glaze and smooth out the final coat because the bristles do leave just a little bit to be desired. I'm going to check it for drips. 
Okay, I'm going to allow this to dry. Okay, and when that dries, I'll flip it over and I'll do the same thing one more time, not focusing on my edges at all. And I'll do that to all of the surfaces. The next thing I want to talk to you about is we probably ought to start um, tracing our pattern. But what I wanted to show you is if you print out a vellum copy, let me get the right dude. If you print out a vellum copy, you've got good see-through vellum, then you can line him up and you don't have to do any of the tracing. Flip it over for the back side, see how transparent that is? Um, and you are good to go. One of the things that I love about the vellum is I'm also using it, um, I wonder if you could use once you do the pattern, if you don't cut the sheet up, I wonder, we're using it to stick our stencils to um, because it'll stick just enough, but it'll release really easily versus like the tack it over and over is too sticky for some um, surfaces. So we stick the stencil onto the vellum and it sticks. You can punch it and put it into your notebook, but I'm wondering if you couldn't use like your used um, transfer sheets once you're done with that pattern. Anyway, I digress. So go ahead and seal your surface and you're going to base coat it in the same way and you're just going to base coat the flesh color and I'm going to rebase coat mine because I did this whole thing and just didn't pay attention to being dirty. If you want to base coat back and front at the same time to make the pieces reversible, just be careful where you're laying it. If I laid him down here with his nice finished front, I would be very sad. So you want to probably go ahead with the old um, towel trick. And the old towel trick is where you take a towel or a paper towel or something that you are darn tootin' sure is clean. You lay that down and then you put him onto the clean thing. Once this clean thing becomes dirty, you get rid of it or you flip it over or whatever, but you keep a clean surface always working for you on your, um, on your piece. That way the back side will stay nice and lovely. Okay, so I've got my clean paper towel. I've got my backside of my Indian. Let's talk about the difference in brushes. This is the Clearly Amazing Filbert um, size 12, and this is the size 12 in the Patty's Favorite Dry Brush. Um, this one is cut like an oval glaze, and this one is cut like a filbert. So these, these hairs all meet together at the end, and these hairs are tapered and shaped. This is a much stiffer bristle. Watch what it does. It just kind of cups, and it'll hold. This one just kind of flops open. This is way more ideal for what we're going to do right here. So I just want to show you those two points. And for some reason, I'm not sure why this happens, but notice that when we get up to just the three quarter inch size, which is like I think the next size up, notice how much longer the bristles get compared to the width. Okay, so like we put that over. Um, this, this number 12 is magical. Um, it's magical for a lot of reasons. But the, the length of the bristles with the width and the way that they're cut just do a really neat thing when you're doing some prep work, and I'm loving it. Okay, so you're going to put your paint on your brush in kind of a specific way. You're going to have um, clean, your, clean your brush out, blot it on your paper towel, and then flat, 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 flat in your paint so we don't have ridges. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to... We're going to sneak up on the edge. Okay, you need to just kind of tip it. So, and you always want to point. So, notice I'm not, I'm turning the piece, and I mean I'm turning the paper towel, not the piece. Very important. You don't want that. You don't want this little chick right here to move anywhere on this paper towel. You want it always to stay the same. So you treat the paper towel as the piece. Anyway, this is going to get us no bleed over the edge. Now, doing it the way I did it by having this base coated first um, is silly. You shouldn't do it that way because what's going to happen is um, you've got your edges already base coated and things like that. If you do it all at the same time and you're doing, you know, whatever this is to her arm right here, you're going to be able to base coat, base coat, base coat, and then you're not going to mess anything up. So doing it this way is, is not the most optimal. Okay, and so we just go through and we tap, tap, tap. And sometimes you can just scooch, scooch, scooch. And as long as you can flick. But that little pat, pat, pat thing works out great. And so you do all the base coats that way if you're worried about getting things on the other side. Otherwise, I would just base coat everything. I'd go ahead and go in with this brush and do the whole base coat just like you did the um, sealer. 
right, the very first thing we're going to do is shade and highlight the Indian's face, or faces. They're the same color palette, so we'll do them together. That will save us some time. We're going to do the highlights in the center, and then the reason we're going to shade second is so that the highlights will bleed over onto, that the shades will bleed over onto the highlight and kind of marry everything together. Do the same thing on his hands, um, and on, well, on this hand, this one doesn't get very much attention, and then on his throat. So we're going to use this um, small scumbly brush. Okay. It's a dome scumbler, actually. And then we dip into dry paint, and then we rub it off on our paper towel. Okay. Then we come into the center of his face. If it's too strong, you're going to see it right away. So then you just spit and wipe and take it away. Start rubbing softly. And I'm at a little bit of an angle. Do you see how I'm not straight up and down? If I'm up and down, you can tell because you can't see the, the brush because the camera's right over my head. Okay, so see how that's lending a nice little... And it's dusty, so you just wipe the dust away. And then I reload, and I strengthen more towards just the center. Don't be afraid to take it out a little bit further than you think, because it'll just marry everything together. Move down into his throat area. Rub this way, rub that way. You'll see little flecks of your paintbrush kind of doing its own thing. That's fine, too. The brushes are super durable, and there's a million hairs, so. And they're cheap, cheap, cheap. Okay, not quite bright enough. And I think we got it. And we'll go over to his little hand. And do a little bit of highlight over there. Not very much. We swap over to Miss Indian Squaw Lady. And we'll see on her what we do. Okay, we'll have the front there. We'll do a little bit with a brush on her hands, with a uh, round brush. So we're just going to do it. It's going to be more highlighted in that center cheek area. But I'll treat the whole thing as if it's getting highlighted. Just I'll concentrate a little bit more over there. The reason I'm starting with the faces is because if you start with the faces, then these little guys will be looking at you. And they'll be like, hey, wait, finish me. And uh, they say that that's actually a really good technique. Now what happens if I get a little bit of something over there? A little wipe and it's gone. And then we do the same with the fingers except we can't use that round brush or the scumbly brush. So what I'm going to do is go into, go into the highlight color which is light mocha and I'm going to just with a round brush, it's in really good condition, do a little bit of dry brushing from the tip in. And that will help define those fingers. And make them just, and that one's underneath, so we don't need to do that one. You want to make sure you're done before you wash your brush if you don't have more than one of them. And if you need to, you can just wipe it onto a clean, wet part of a paper towel and clean it up just a little bit. I'm going to go into the next. Um, well, actually, we're going to go ahead and finish these guys, so I will wash my brush and then just dry it off very well. Alright, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to shade. I'm using an angle shader, and I'm just going to do very dry, I'll blot that, very dry, go each direction to get it blended, but I don't want it floating all the way across her face. Okay, then we'll come in here. And we'll just lead with the toe and get her a nice rounded look. We need to make sure to get underneath her chin. Okay, notice I blotted right there. I didn't want it quite as far out as it was going. We'll go under her hands. I'll flip her around. Continue to rotate these guys. Okay, now this one I want to be on this hand right here, on the underneath hand, so I'll just tuck that in. Okay, 
And then that should be dry up there by her face. So now we'll do the other side under her hair. Maybe we'll deepen under her chin. And then we'll check on her hands to see if we can maybe draw that down and around just a little bit more. And then this one needs to be tucked um, into her arm, into her shirt as well. We'll do the other, both sides of her neck. Uh, probably we'll have to wait for that to dry. Let me see if we are, I don't truly really want the end of her face done, so we'll just, by the time I'm done talking and rotating this will be dry. I'm going to lead in with just my little toe. There we go. Clean that up. All right, I think she's got her shading. We'll move on to Mr. Mr. Indian Husband here. Okay, so we'll immediately get his chin. For him, I think that's the most important part, is getting that little distinguished kind of square chin. I'm strong. And go over here, tuck his arm into. This one's a little bit trickier on his hand. So we want to shade, and I'm just going to kind of lead with my toe, not with the whole brush there. And then I'll just pat it just a little bit, just to give it a fairly distinguished line, and then we'll just line in. Okay, and then we'll shade the bottom of his hand, because that's cupped under, and it's holding things move back up. What I like about having all these base coated is you can go from one piece to another and back again so that you don't have to worry about things being wet. Okay, and you just do both sides of his neck. And don't make these, whatever you do. Now we need to do his face. both sides of his face. Okay, once we get the um, all of the shading done, we'll transfer on the face details. If you transfer on the face details before, we'll shade his neck on where his chest disappears into his shirt. If you do his um, details first, then you won't be able to um, keep the lines on there very well. Okay, we'll just deepen this side. Okay, and I think she's all shaded, so I think we're good there. And now I'll dry them and we'll put the details on. All right, while waiting for my face to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and shade the hair with lamp black. Okay, and we'll shade, oop, keep you on there. We'll shade the hair nice and softly. We don't wanna take over all the zinc color next to his face. And I'm going to do it kind of chisely. Right there next to his face. So that way it's not too wide and takes over all that zinc. His hair disappears. I'll do the same thing down here where it goes behind the shoulders. where it goes into his headband. Okay, and I think that'll work. I'll we'll swap out and we'll do our Indian chick. And that'll go right under her headband. And she's got a little bit more hair going for her there, so she can um, afford that float to be a little bit bigger. And then you want to go under each of these sections. We'll bring them down into a little V. Same thing on her, we'll go over her hat. And then we'll wait for that to dry and we'll do the top of her, um, the top of her head.
wash the brush and into the Raphael liner. So super, 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 super fine, fine point. This is a number two. When you're using a liner, you want to go into um, the paint and you want to grab some out and you want to make a little puddle. I'm going to fully load. I don't want to wet ferrule, so I always dry my ferrule off. Fully load it and then just tap it to get rid of any like super excess. And then with this, we're going to add streaky streaks of hair. Okay, and then same thing there. We'll add some down here. Okay, and we'll go into our highlight. We're going to do the same with the Indian um, husband. Our highlight color is um, Bahama Blue. Doing exactly the same technique. Keep these more to the center. Keep them out of your shade areas. Okay, and give her a couple just across the top there. And that just gives her the impression of that kind of reflective hair that um, really dark hair people have. And we'll do the same here. I think we will start with our black though. I don't know if I need to or not, but I'm going to. And we'll just give him some nice lines here. We'll go a couple of this ways and that ways. And then the same highlight. on that crown. And now my face is dry and now I can transfer my face details. When transferring details you want to use the oldest rattiest piece of transfer paper that you have. And the reason for this is, is you don't want it really dark. If I wanted a strong one I would go out here to the outer edge where I haven't transferred as much. If I want something light I would use a really busy area. I love having the printout of the patterns because uh, the patterns that I buried because they um, make such nicer it's one less um, transfer mistake that can be made because the computer does it for you whereas if you do it by hand every time you trace it or transfer it it's going to be slightly different okay so we'll find our worn out piece and slide that into there <clears throat> This is where you want to be really careful um, to get a good line. I'm just going to make a line for his eyebrows, and then I'll check and peek to make sure that I can see that. I can see it barely. That's good. I want his eye line, his nose line, his eyeballs, under nose, and then these little details. Give him this little cheek line. <clears throat> and can I see that? Not very well, so we'll go with a darker spot. That's why you check. Let's see what we got now. Okay, now I can see him. I'm going to switch to a little flat brush because I just want to make sure that I'm not going to travel as far as, as I can if I use a bigger brush. And I'm going to use a flat brush in really good condition. Okay, I'm going to take a little peek at his face and we'll see. I want to do that side of his nose. I want to do like a er, er here. Um, a little bit. We don't have anything under his nose. I think we'll shade under his eyes. Okay. So we want to do our irk irk. That's his chiseled cheekbones. And we'll just shade where his eyes go. And we'll shade to one side of his nose. Make sure we don't have anything too crazy. Just swap these guys. Let's take a look at her. She's got a little chisel there, that side of her nose, and a little bit over her eyes. 
and I didn't transfer her face details, so that's going to be a small problem. I'll have to trace that. Okay, now I have the face details, and so we'll start with her nose. A little bit of a nosy nose. Okay, and then we'll give her some eye area. And that already gives her that little bit of an impression that she's give her a little mouth and a little bit underneath her chin. Gives her kind of a strong little chin. And deepen the shading over there by her hair. And she gets a little bit of a cheekbone thing. She's strong. Then we take our details, and we're gonna. You know, that's why you want a super de duper de fine brush, is when you get into some of these details. They're crazy detail. We want to give her some black eyebrows and yaw. It's about time for a new pair of glasses. And just tapping and touching where her eyebrows go. Do the same thing for our dude. He's got pretty heavy brows. Leaning back just a little bit and just going to follow that line. Same thing over here. see if we think that they have enough eyebrow. Hers is a little bit heavy. What, how could you do, what could you do if you didn't want that little bit right there? You go backwards to the base coat color, okay, to the cashmere beige, and you can just go in with the very tip of your brush, <clears throat> and you can do just a little bit of like a surgery on her eyebrows. When that dries, it ought to be about okay. And if it's not, I'll go into the cashmere beige and just touch that just a little bit more. That just took that edge off of it. Okay, we're going to do his eyeballs and his eye lid with thin lamp black. And then we're just going to do a series of little hash marks to make his eyeball. Okay, we don't need round little eyeballs. So let's touch these in. I'm going to take a little bit of sable brown and mix it in my black to tone the black down. And I'll give him his nose line, his cleft line, and his lips. Now he's going to need a little color in his face. We'll get a little bit of red going here in a minute. And we need to shade in his um, Adam's apple here. So I'm going to give him a little Adam's apple. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing for... I think the darker color on her face would be incorrect, so we'll line her face with the sable brown. She's kind of already got it all lined because I shaded. Okay, I'll give her black eyes. I'm leaning off to the side so I can see what I'm doing. If you put her eyes to basically the same side, it'll look like she's peering over there. Okay. She also needs a little bit of color in her cheek. We're going to go to our scumbly brush. All right, we're going to take our um, blush color, which is deep burgundy, and we're going to dry rub and really make sure you scumble off. Okay, and she's got some cheeks on both sides. Okay, I'm make sure, make sure. 
Maybe I dried too much off. It's better to go this route subtly than to get it all at one time and have it be like screaming at you. On this side I'm going to have to be a little stronger because it'll be hard to get around her nose. And then we'll balance her out. Okay. Well, kiss the color is just a great thing. Okay, he gets a little bit too on his high cheekbones. So he's a little bit more to the middle of his face. Ruddy complected. Okay, you could give him a little bit in his shading on his neck if you wanted to. Okay. Okay, we're gonna shade these guys, the pilgrims, with dusty let's see it's dusty rose. I'm gonna shade under to get the chin right. I lightened up my graphite lines on his neck. They seemed like they were just gonna be a little bit harsh. I'm gonna shade his hands where they tuck into things. Now the hands get a little bit strange over here. He's got quite a lot of detail on these hands. Don't stress about it though because you're just going to know that they're hands. Sometimes I'm just tickling in a little bit of color. Sometimes we worry so much that's not perfect but you're not going to need it to be perfect either. <clears throat> we want his knuckles to be shaded. And then we'll shade where things come in his hand. shade right there. And maybe we'll shade that because it's underneath that pumpkin. And we'll go back north to his face. And I've got some kind of little goober right there. Let's see if I can get that off. I'm gonna have to base coat that off. And that is quite the quite the strong little thing there. Alright but in the meantime I'll go ahead and shade under his hat. And then I'll shade either side of his face. And I'll try to keep my shading out of, whoops, shoop, keep the shading out of that little goober so I can just go right into it and swap places. And we'll shade her. So I've got the same thing going with her. So a little bit of a neck, too much shadow on her. Too much of a line on her neck, sorry. And my paint is drying out so it's not going into right where I want it to go. So I'll reload. We want that water, the paint to be able to go into that toe of that brush. Otherwise there's no sense in even using it. And I'll do the sides next to her hair. and stay away from the top of her head. We'll shade down here by her hands, even almost just tinting that bottom hand and where that's going to come out of. There, and then maybe just a little bit right there. Okay, and look on the other side. She's going to have some, a little bit of deepening We'll go ahead and deepen with just a little bit of sable brown. Really skinny float here. Really, really, really skinny float. Whoops. So we'll run that along just to give him a little bit stronger neck. And then we'll tuck this into the corners where things would really be shielded. I still have to go get that thing out of there down here on his hands and then you can deepen circles. And 
other side of his neck. We didn't get that. Okay, I'll deepen her features. Okay, so we'll give her a nice strong chin. And then we'll give her just a little bit darker roots. comes over and where her hands go in and where they're folded over each other. And I think we'll shade the other side of her neck as well. It just defines everything just a little bit better. While we're waiting for faces to dry, we'll go ahead and do hair. We're going to shade the hair with milk chocolate. And when we look at that, we're going to shade down the part on both sides of the hair okay, where it disappears into over her shoulder. And that's a really wide float that needs to be thinned way up. So the way that you control the width of your float, okay, let's get you room if I can find my paint. When I get in this close, it's really hard to find where I'm at. So. You control it by how far you dip that toe in. If I'm way halfway across my brush and I blend, that's going to be a really big float. <clears throat> if I go into just the little tippy toe, not with all that water, and I do that, then I'm going to have a much skinnier float. Whoops, a much skinnier float. So I can just keep reloading that, and that's going to give me that control. So you see the differences between that. That's how you get the control that you want. <clears throat> and so we'll go next to our little face here, leading just with that skinny little toe. Which side is her part on? Looks like it's right here. And we'll shade on both sides of her part. Reload. Skinny floats don't last very long. Or the hair disappears over the shoulders. And then, of course, where it goes behind the hat. And down the back side. I'm going to do her hair with a little bit of the same. Oh, my floats disappeared. for a minute and let it dry. You can add some curl and some flow with floated um, sideways strokes if you want to do it that way. It's just a little bit of a thicker look than it is to do it with the liner brush. So if you want her to have thick flowing locks then you do it that way. If you want her to have thin hair then you do it the other way. We're going to take the yellow cad yellow and we're going to add highlights okay so i've got her definitely going into the thicker hair direction and you could add some more shadow if you want you can add some more um, hairs you could float some more so maybe i'll make that part just be a little bit stronger And we do him same way. So I go across under his hat. And then we'll do next to his neck and face. some lined detail for him as well. Just brightens it up and gives him a little bit more European kind of coloring, depending on which European country we're talking about.
And now it's time to transfer the face details. All right, we want to line his eye. And then we want to give him little squiggly eyes. Okay, his features are lined with the thin sable brown. And that just lets us have them there so that then we can shave them. Play with his nose. Okay, he's got a little bit of a kind of a smirky little thing going on. Okay, he's got a good face. His eyebrows, we're going to make them match his, his hair a little bit. I'm going to go ahead with the sable brown and put them in and add just a couple little highlights with the uh, with the gold, the yellow, the cad yellow. And that's going to be way too thick because I didn't thin it. So I'll dig that piece off of there and try it again. <clears throat> if you use solid paint, it's going to come off solidly, so you've got to thin it just a little bit. Especially if you're trying to get, like, you know, eyelashes or eyebrows. So now we'll just add just a little bit of golden color right there. Lighten them up. Okay, and then we're going to scrub on his cheeks. His cheeks are kind of highlighted up to the middle. Here's that ruddy farmer stalk. Not very much rubbing can go on in this small space. Just a teeny bit of shading on his face. I'm going to go ahead and skip over to the um, sable brown. I didn't shade his neck into his shirt. Let's do that. And we need to give him his Adam's apple. And if in these corners they need to be darkened, like see how that's just got a little bit of a light look? That's where his neck and his jaw all meet. You can darken that. Give him just a little bit of a cast for his nose. A little bit of deepening over his eyes. <clears throat> okay, we'll go there with her as well. Let's take a look at her face first. Oops. So she's lined, and she has just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of shading. So I almost think we could skip the shading. We'll give her a shaded nose. It just gives her a little bit of depth. Lined with the sable. Now, y'all. I don't know about you, but when I slow down to do my lining, it's always when I get the most reckless. I do much better when I go quickly into my lining. So having a little bit of confidence is a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and put her eyelids on because I can't almost tell where they're at, and I'm afraid I'll erase them. Now I'll go into the lamp, black. are kind of going over to that direction where she's looking. Okay. And her little eyebrows are the brown. So we'll give her just a little bit of a um, milk chocolate eyebrows. 
And these want to be real dainty. That's why we're using this wonderful brush to be able to get those individual hairs. This is a Raphael liner, and it is expensive, but it'll last you 20 years, 30 years. And I'm not joking, that is um, the norm for these brushes. They just last and last. <clears throat> Now we're going to give her some blush on her face. And not enough on my brush. Boop, got it on her nose. No, no, no. Okay, now when you back up, you're very, very close on this. When you back up, yay, cute couple. Okay, and I think on her nose, I think we're going to give her just a little bit of highlight because I think my pinky was dirty from um, from doing the um, other mistakes. I'll give her just a little bit of a scooch of her base coat color for a highlight. Clean up her nose. We could give him one too. Just bring it forward just slightly. <clears throat> okay, the hard part's done. You can all breathe a sigh of relief. Hair and hands and faces all done. Now we can just march our way th through the rest of the things, clothes and cuffs and things like that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is all black things. Okay, so we're going to do his hat, his belt, his shoes, his gun stock, and her shoe, and I believe that that's all black things besides the Indian's hair, which was just treated just slightly differently. We're already um, we're already based in the zinc color, which is our first highlight color. We're going to mix a little bit of our two colors. We're going to have bleach sand and zinc, and we'll mix them together to create the first shade color. And we're going to dry rub. Okay, so we're just going to go on there and we're just going to create that first level of highlightness. Then we'll go into a dry brush because this is, and this is a brush that is very bristly and it's shaved from side to side so that it will kind of do a scratchy look. When we can't use a round scumbly brush, dry brush is the way to get that kind of look next. Um, so now we want to go in the middle right here to create this kind of just this highlight straight across the middle. Once again, I'm starting with the um, the highlight first, and then I'll shade to kind of sink it down together. Okay. Now we've got this middle of this gun stock. That's why we're going to use this great big fat number eight brush, but we're going to turn it sideways. Okay. So we'll go fat kind of there, and then we'll go right down the middle. And it just will create this nice detail. We've got the shoes down here. Our shoes done. Just little highlights in the middle. We can do two ways. I'm going to go ahead and use the rub brush. If I can find where I popped it. We could do the dry brush or we could do the rub way. Neither way is, neither is incorrect. These areas in between I haven't base coated yet. They'll just get base coated black. The uh, little negative areas um, that we couldn't have cut out. Now we'll go backwards and we'll go to straight um, dirty brush into straight bleach sand and we'll highlight right in the middle of the highlight that we already did. Okay, see this one's hardly not even showing at all. Okay, and then we'll switch to the other brush, just dirty brush into a little bit more bleach sand, so it'll be slightly tinted with the gray. And then just a tickle, just a little tickle. And then on his belt. Now 
maybe just a little bit of extra on here. His little hat is going to need to have a brim. So we'll go across with his little brim highlight. Okay. Her foot will just get a little tickle of color. And probably just one. More than one's probably not going to be needed. She's just poking out the end there under her skirts. Now for the shine, when we want to get shine, we're just going to drag um, just real strong bleached sand. Shiny things have strong sparkles. So we'll just get a little bit of shiny bleached sand. <clears throat> now we're going to shade. I want to have some control with this, so I'm going to switch to my flat brush for the gun stock. And that's going to be with Lamp Black. And I want a nice thin float. Down either side. And my brush is turned to an angle as well. So not only am I doing a thin float, but I'm tur turning my brush. side. What I love about these guys being laser cut is the amount of detail you get in the cutouts. That's all accurate. And then when we get up here we flatten our brush. Oops. Every now and again when you pull too long on your chisel you'll end up with a split brush. You just go wash it and it comes back. Now I'll switch to the angle shader and I'll wash my highlight brush. And I'll float kind of a nice generousy wide float. And we're gonna get his hat. Both sides. side. And we can give him just a little bit of shadow land going over across the brim. We'll come down while we're waiting for that to dry and we'll do his belt. Just to either side and you can walk it in. This is what's nice about doing the same colors on all the pieces at the same time. I think I've said that already, but it gives you a chance to have things dry so that you're not wasting a bunch of time sitting around with a brush that's perfectly loaded. Now I'll come over here, this is dry now, and I'll scoop underneath that hat. And then I'll also get on top of his hat band just a little bit as well. We'll go down to his shoes, and I don't have the detail down there on that. But I'm pretty certain they come up the back sides. Okay. We have to shade on his shoe where the um, where the gun is standing on top of or over his foot. Okay, let's see what else we got. We got some kind of little tongue thing sticking out right here. I don't think we're going to worry too much about what the real construction of a pilgrim slipper looks like. Okay. I like it. Now we'll get her little toe going. She just gets shaded right underneath. and the blacks are done. The very first thing we want to do is go ahead and do desert sand highlights on our buckskin. So we'll just rub with the crescent brush. This 
is a rather large one and it'll cover a big area. You can go fat with it or skinny with it. I'm going to try and stay out of your other areas and you're going to have shading anyway, so that should work out just nicely for you. Go skinny down his arms, down the center of his arms. Whoops, skinny and then are very strong. Be careful with that. You want to rub off. Okay, I didn't rub off enough. If it's doing that, that means it's not rubbed enough. Okay, you can have just a little bit of a highlight on either side of his hips here. Okay, and we'll go on to her side. And do on her chest. And her arms. I haven't got this base coated at all, so I can go right through it. We'll do a different technique on the cuffs. Okay, and this is just a big flat area, so we want to be careful about giving it a pattern, and it's a stiff fabric, so it's not going to have a lot of drape. And we'll repeat where we think we didn't get it enough, like on her, her skirt or on her dress, on her tunic, maybe. That sets the stage for the next color, which is going to be the bleach sand. Dirty brush. Don't wash your brush out. And then we'll go back. And we'll highlight up the middle. Same thing. Just repeat it all again. And it's not going to be shiny, so we don't want a real high highlight. I'll go ahead and wash my brush, even though I think I'm going to use it again and have some other sizes. Dry it out really good, just in case I do need it a little bit later. That's why I do recommend having a couple of sets of these, so that you don't have to wait um, for things to dry. Okay, then we're going to start shading. We're going to use our angle shader. And we're going to shade it first with milk chocolate. And that's just going to be a regular kind of a float regular shading, but not a swamp regular shading, so I'll have to blot my brush. Okay, and then what we want to do is we just want to highlight or shade everywhere next to everywhere. So that comes down there. His arm is bent here. We've got cuffs right there, which I still have to highlight, around the corners. next to his suit. Alright, we'll continue with our shading. And the shading is just kind of really everywhere where things cross. I don't know that showing everything is a smart thing to do. It's just everything that sits on top of that buckskin gets shaded next to um, the thing that's sitting on top of it. hands, or one piece of um, buckskin hides another, both sides of the arms. Okay, that starts just taking on some nice color, where his shoulders go back and around. Notice I don't just stroke one stroke. I think it looks prettier if you um, kind of work it a little bit. It kind of works it into the surface and it blends a little bit better. His arms meet his chest on both sides of his cuffs, which I didn't highlight. I'll have to take care of that. Down his arm. Oops, 
skin comes out. I think that'd be kind of a strong little liney poo. Underneath there. To that side. And I think I think he might be ready to swap. side of our arms here. Cuffs, same deal. Same deal, different check. Can just kind of glaze that area in. If you notice the general lack of sound of me cleaning my brush, it's because I don't clean my brush between Floats, I just simply keep loading more paint and water until the clean side of my brush becomes bad. Like then. Okay, and we look for more areas for the shape over the detail comes out. On both sides of the cuffs now that the rest of the area is dry. And then on both sides of her tunic. Bring it right down into that fringe area that's hanging off to the side. I'll get a shade. No, I left that and I do a little detail for fringe down there. Okay, we'll swap back. Then we'll go into some russet. And the russet's going to be smaller. Don't want to do anything real scary with the russet, but we want to deepen things now. Where things come down into deeper, darker areas, um, the thing that crosses over that casts the most shadow will get some russet shading. This little baby is not a baby, but it's a darker area underneath here, obviously. You can widen that if you think it ought to be a darker shadow. That just gives him a little bit deeper look where he goes behind his hair there. Over the top of the shoulders. Okay, okay, okay. This is probably pretty dark down here. Same thing, I didn't even do that one. Okay, and then he's probably got some pretty good shading going on right under here. That's where things are in his hands. I'll deepen that. Just a little bit of a better detail. Okay, I think we can swap them. This isn't so hard when you're doing it all at once, I don't think. A lot of detail, but it's the same thing over and over again. You can batch, batch your tasks together. Cuffs. Where that arm goes down in there is probably a darker area. And then of course where it's underneath all that stuff right there. Alright, we're going to dry brush on the Pilgrim's clothes. 
I'm switching to a clean spot on my dry brushing paper towel. We're going to do desert sand. And we're just going to highlight just exactly like we did on the Indians. It's exactly the same technique, just slightly different colors. Okay, so he's got a funny little crook to his arm here. Since that's forward, that's probably okay to be brighter. I can scrub wide or I can scrub skinny with these brushes. And that makes everything wonderful. Repeat and scrub just a little bit more. Wasn't happy with how much I got done. Sometimes you just need to let the layers fold up. Okay, then we're gonna repeat with, um, oh, hello, I just went in the same color, bleach sand. And because it's dirty in my brush, it's going to appear a little darker. So it'll build up and sneak up on its own self. Remember, we don't want things too shiny. Now I'm going to repeat one more time with just bleach sand. And that'll be just slightly stronger, and then I'll just go in that isolated area. Okay, now I'll swap. And her apron. And that's going to be slight mix. Oh, not her apron. We're on her clothes, sorry. Dress. Well, that's forward, but kind of under, so watch that. And then a little bit of highlight there. Remember, we shade on top, so if I get a little bit kind of wild and get up into my shadow area, it won't matter because we'll be able to... Now, with this one, you want to see where these folds are, but wherever it goes down, that's going to be higher. And actually that's probably not true wherever it would go up, that's probably higher, but whatever. Just I would say just alternate them, choose one and stick with it, and it'll give you the illusion of a ruffled skirt. And we'll save technical questions like which way would be the right way for art class. If you care, you can probably find out by just draping some fabric. As long as I have a corresponding illusion here, I'm okay. I'm going to dirty brush into bleach sand and repeat all those areas. Brighten them up just a little bit. Are you going to be able to go there? Yay. One more, whoops, and I did it again. I put my brush right into the desert sand. One more if we want these to be a little higher. Okay, you could have one more little high spot right there. And now we'll wash that brush out and switch to our shading. I'm going to use the same brush and we're going to begin with milk chocolate. And we're going to shade under everything that crosses in front of everything. under her apron. I'll show you how we'll make that look like it's even more raised in just a second. 
Now the deeper your shadow is, the more it looks like something big is over it. And her apron is very thin, so we want to show that there's a shadow, but we don't want to make a big fat shadow because, like this is her whole arm with a cornucopia in it. This should be a fairly significantly shaded area. This is a thin apron over the top of a skirt, so we want to make sure to have the right amount of shadow for the area that we're working on. Okay, and then we want to get the side of her dress. That's where things go around corners. Where they fade back. They also get darker because it shows them going around the figure. And depending on how big you want her to be, you could um, change the perspective just by um, increasing the shadow. go this long distance I needed more water in my brush so I went back and I got a much juicier load of paint and water. And right behind her arm here. It's going to be pretty dark. Now you can do a couple of things with this. You can either flip float or you can just do a dry rub. And I'm going to use the milk chocolate color and to make that look like it's indeed sunk down you dry rub in between it and that gives you a couple variations of color and gives it a real skirty kind of look okay and then we go back to him opinion this isn't one of the most exciting videos to watch but if you want to quickly march your way through the, all these pieces and you do have questions then it is makes it very very simple to follow along I think you now feel free to pause anywhere you need to I'm shading him down here underneath whatever it is he saw he's holding a pumpkin I'll just wash that color in And then we go, let's see, make sure that this gets dark down here. And we'll make sure that it gets dark on the edge as well, but not until it dries. Shade to either side. Where his cuffs come over. And where his arm comes in. Somewhere there's a little shouldery moment. Ah! His shoulder is under a bunch of corn. So I'll go ahead and shade it anyway. That way you don't have, that's one of the reasons to do this kind of detail before you do um, like the stuff like the corn because then when you do stuff on top of it, it will settle down just like it's supposed to. And I need to look. Okay, I've got this right over here. Yeah, something's going on right here and I've got to just, I'll pretend like I know what it is and then I'll fix it later. I'm supposed to have a piece of black painted there. So I'll just make sure that's wide enough to allow for some black. Now we'll go through and we'll use some burnt umber. This is what are, is going to keep this color from looking too much like buckskin and more like a, a plaid, uh, like a woven fabric. Okay, so now we're going to shade with just burnt umber. It's going to give us some depth, but not that reddish kind of hue. And notice that we never deepen everywhere. We want to deepen where things are going to logically be deeper. Or the color would be darker. We could deepen down here and just plug that up. Okay, I think 
think she's done. And now we repeat the process with him. He gets this flap goes over that flap, so we need that to be the darker one. And then of course where his belt is. Oops, as long as I white, be careful. And we've got to figure that out. Okay, and I think he can be done too. We can switch to a slightly bigger brush. Um, this is the bristle scumbler, scumbler for this really large area of our turkey, and we're going to put that in the same colors as the pilgrims. Uh, we're going to highlight that in the same colors. And so we're going to highlight it just right there in the middle, and we'll just use big shape following scumbly strokes. Stay out of the um, area where the will be um, shaded. And you don't have to worry about it, but you know, just work around it. And maybe one more time. These brushes make such short work of highlights in the middle of round areas. Okay, now we'll go and dirty brush into the bleached sand. And we'll make sure if it's cold, it means it's wet, so be careful of that. You don't want it to glom on. And dry rubbing paint will glom if it's wet when you do it. Okay, so that's where our basic highlight area is. And I think that's probably more than sufficient. Oops. His feet are going to get highlighted as well, so we'll just go ahead and use our round, our little round brush we were using. And we'll just drag on some little highlights there down the centers of his toes. we have. Okay, I think that's the only areas that we have that are um, the cocoa color. So now we'll shade. You can find our brush. We'll shade with milk chocolate. I'm going to wash that scumble brush out. And where did I decide to turn? All the way around the back, around the neck. Eh, around almost everything. Okay, so we'll start in a corner. My brush has got some water on it. Actually, let's go ahead and start here at the bottom and go up to a corner. Walk it out as we need to. And then we'll just make this series of And then go back behind yourself and clean up that front end of the scallops that where that paint should be fading. And if we need to, I see where I'm cleaning up maybe is giving me a little bit of a line, I can use my um, detail mop. side. So where that big old turkey is sitting 
over his legs. That's going to be nice and deeply shaded. I didn't give too much detail to this, but I think we can if we want to. We could shade behind those that area just a little bit. And we'll give him some russet. Increase his reds. And that's going to be in the areas that are darkest. Right behind his neck. The tops of different. Down over here underneath everything. Next, we're going to highlight all of the khaki tan areas, except for on our Indian. Um, both Indians do not have highlights on the khaki tan. And khaki tan is a color that I use when I want to indicate that something is white or something, but it's on a really dark surface. So that's why um, I use the khaki tan. And then in these guys' case, I just brighten it up to a really bright white or in what appears to be a bright white. So we're going to dry rub <clears throat> with bleach sand. And we'll just repeat it a couple of times. I'm going to start off soft and then we'll get stronger and stronger. Okay, and then that is just going to give us the appearance of like a homespun white fabric, which is exactly what I want it to look like because they are pilgrims after all. Down his leg. Flipped it over so I didn't have to even reload. And I will be doing this one more time just to get it bright enough. Okay. And when you do it the next time, you can leave it just slightly more juicy on your brush. Being careful. A little bit of experimentation is a good thing here. And then heavier pressure when you're rubbing as you go down the legs. And I could take one more with barely anything not even wiped out at all if I really wanted to increase the whiteness. Then we'll switch to her. And we'll work the same way. I've already got that loaded. This one's going to be a little tricky. I'll probably have to patch some of my purple. Maybe not. Okay, over her hair, we'll switch to a brush there, to a little round brush. And then just nice big sweeping strokes here. It's a fairly good size area. We'll switch to our round brush and dry it out. And then with fairly strong paint, whoops, I'll hit the mark. We might want to line that right up next to our hat to show that that's like the brim. Like it's reflecting in the light. We can come over here, we can do a little bit more in this controlled area to increase the color. Now up and under her, her little bow and everything here, it wouldn't get very bright, but I want it maybe just a little bit brighter than it is. Just to indicate white. And if I need to, I just rub that. Now when I've got it a little liney right there, when I shade, um, that's going to eliminate a lot of that. So I'm not going to worry about it. 
I think a lot of painting experience is just knowing when to panic and when not to panic. Um, Once you got that, I think you're you're in a happy place. Okay, if I want her to be a little bit brighter white, I go into my white. Notice that we work in layers. I don't go all the way to the highest white right away. Um, I wait to see how it's going to look with the rest of the piece. Okay, and then maybe just a little bit more up here. And his cups maybe just a little bit more bright and a little bit more shape following. And give them just a little bit more roundness going in. Okay, and I think we oops, we gotta do our turkey. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to use this brush. I could use my little one if I could find it. So instead, I'm going to use my round, the Pro Round brush works brilliantly as a skinny little baby dry brush. Doesn't get it as fuzzy. stuff right there. I'm going to take Mississippi Mud and that's going to be our shadow color. Okay, so I'll start with the turkey since he's right in front of me. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to shade on top of each one of these little places and you do back to back. Okay, and we'll revert. I'm just going to go ahead and move on to one of our people here and finish the turkey in a minute. With these guys we're going to do the same thing that we've done with every other place. We're going to shade where things are under Okay, and I'll just kind of line shade that. Okay, and then we've got to define what's going on here. That's under, that's over a shoulder, and that's under and over a shoulder. You don't want to get these areas too dark because the khaki tan is already a very dark value color. And I think we'll pretend like that goes that way. Maybe that goes that way. And then we shade under everything. And down the front. And she's not really going down the front over here. Um, my things aren't turning so much, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a shadow for just general principles, but not so much for, I'm not proving anything, if that makes sense. We need to shade under where the bow goes. Anytime we start getting into these little areas, we'll just rest our brush in there and just pull. And then liner, liner float the other. Okay, we'll switch to our dude. And which leg goes in front of which leg. And we'll get out our ghost rider. Yeah, if I can find it. It's laying around here somewhere. Get out the ghost rider and switch it to the white ceramic lead and it's okay, the one opposite of the gun. Okay, so I'm just going to mark. Oops, I don't want him to have like very big calves of steel here. If you unscrew the end, there's a little eraser on board. That does erase with water spit varnish and all that kind of stuff, and 
when you twist it, it's got a gray lead and it's got a roller ball, which makes it so, for all this tracing, this has been so comfortable for me to do my tracing. Very versatile tool. So we'll get him shaded. Shape under. And where things cross in front, so right here where his cap is there, we want to show that that crosses in front and shade under it, and then down each side of his legs as well. And where his foot goes into his shoe. I have a hard time imagining how they had hose and things like that back in that day. They had to be made of very thick stuff and how you'd ever keep anything of color, I, I can't even begin to imagine, but I don't know that that wasn't so much the worry, right? But our guy has bleached hose here. Okay, and we'll go and droop. Over the shoulders. Around the pumpkin. Now remember, our pumpkin is going to have, um, it's going to do all kinds of, of the other stuff he's got in his arms is going to hide a bunch of stuff. But we'll just go ahead and shade around that pumpkin anyway. Okay, and we can have a little highlight. I'll go ahead and float a highlight on his calf. If I can dig any bleached sand out of there. So right there, that might be a higher place to show that that's over. All right, everybody's got some purple, so we're gonna deal with purple all together. I'm going to brush mix an equal, equal part of the grape juice, Ooh, maybe in not so much of that. And I'm going to dry rub. And whoops, not dry enough. Dry rub on that. And we'll switch brushes, but in the meantime, let's see who else I can get with this great big. Um, she's got a great big old skirt here. Now we're going to pretend like her fringe isn't on there. That just gives me an idea of how far down to go for her fringe. And I'll just highlight with this brush. And I think he has that apron, so he's got quite a bit of spots to Okay, her cloak has to be done in a different way, and so I will go ahead and just brighten their highlights with a little bit more bleach sand. Okay. Just go here. Keep the rub on top of the other because it's a pretty dark, grape juice is a pretty dark little purple. And, and I'd say those ones are done. I'll wash my brush and dry it in case I need it again. I still got the Indians' britches to do and some turkey work. Okay, now we'll switch to the dry brush and we'll dry brush the other highlights. So we'll want to mix our purple and our bleach sand. And that's where we'll put just a dry brush over the top. And he's got a hat band too. Oops, good job, camera. And then we'll go a little bit more. And then just a little bit more into the bleach sand. And we'll swap over to her. And we'll do the highlights on her robe here, her cloak. A little bit on the bow. 
it just helps give everybody some definition. Now on this front area right here where she's coming down the front and there's going to be a strong shadow, we'll make that be a really strong edge. And then we'll increase the strong with a little bit more bleach sand, but skinnier. Yeah, not enough. everybody's highlight for the purple, oops, except for our turkey. Our turkey gets a little bit of a special treatment. He has soft black base coated there, and then he gets um, a strong purple highlight on each one of those places. So we'll start with the first highlight. I'm going to dry out my brush. It's going to be dry brushed with grape juice. Okay, so he's just, whoops, not enough. It's going to be a really strong, not even dry brush, it's just going to be a wet pass over, like a glaze, kind of. Alright, I'm going to get everybody on their own towels again. It makes it nice to be able to just move the towel instead of worrying about. Alright, so now I move this instead of moving this. So we go over there with all of that. That way it's not really purple, it's just a little kind of a little bit of purple. And it's not screaming at you. And now we'll highlight that with just a dry brush to increase the look of the purple. Turning my brush sideways as I need to. All right, now get a little closer. And now we're gonna shade. We're gonna start with, um, what color do we have here? We're gonna black plum and then move into soft black. It's going to go under everything. Really focusing on keeping that skinny right there. Then we'll go into this side over here, right next to that highlight that we did. And that gives that illusion of her cloak flapping in the breeze a little bit. Side, just little bits of stuff here. I'm going to switch into soft black. And that's where I want to really make sure that I've got like defined lines, like little floats of soft black. Just really deepen everything. Still purple, but not screaming purple. Okay, so her details are done for her purple. And this guy's got his headband. So I'll wipe out my brush and I'll go back into the whatever this color is. I'm going to keep it up front. Soft plum, black plum. I think I'll do these two together because they have very similar stuff going on. I much more prefer doing the colors in the order that you use them instead of doing one all the way to completion and then starting another. That just seems like a lot more work. Okay, so we're going to shade under his arm here on his apron thing, whatever that is. And okay, we'll go here bring some of that purple down or under there so just to show darkness <clears throat> so he's got a little bit of a kind of a gathered thing going on so we'll do something with that in a minute I'll show you how When I chose the colors for this piece, I chose them um, because I chose a fall palette, not because 
um, I thought that they would have these brilliant apron, um, purple aprons and things like that. So my thought was to find some color that was believable um, to work with all the tans and things like that. Um, blue is what I started out with. Okay, go into the Pilgrim Dude. This um, black plum's got a nice, lovely red cast to it. So it just kind of leans everything over to a warm kind of color. And we'll do his hat first. Big old water drops on my barrel. On his detail, on his um, little bolo tie thing here, you can just use your brush and just bring out a little bit of a deeper detail. Alright, and we go back to all three of them with the, um, is it soft black? Yeah, soft black. And we'll swap them out. Headband's darker. And shade up there so that, that fringe shows. Okay, we'll do the same here. is going fast enough. I'm not even getting dry between all the characters. Okay. Alright, we're going to dry rub the pants. Hopefully we have a brush that's kind of dry. With um, cocoa first. And then we'll dry rub her shoes. And then we go into desert sand, dirty brush. shade with milk chocolate is that correct yeah that's correct and we need to shade around that corner and then we shade up and down the legs And then we shade on top of these seams on her shoes. And flip them over to the other side. change into russet and we'll repeat the shading if I can find a dry area and that'll give us just a nice darker buckskin kind of look yep time to hit the blow dryers Okay, now we'll continue in with our russet. Okay, 
Okay, and then on her shoes, same thing. Not the other side of his leg. Alright, we're going to walk through some of the, the littler detail. Get you on the camera. Okay, we want to flatten out our um, little round, our pro round brush. And that's what we're going to do with these little diamonds on the front of their outfits. So that's how we'll do that. We will take our black plum color, and that is the color, I think, of her trim. Yes. So here we go. And just trim that out. And we'll repeat that down at the bottom. Oops, the bottom doesn't get that. She has a brighter trim down there. That's just the trim for up top. His is, however, that color. So trim that. Then you can shade in from the edges like that with the soft black. Her trim down here is the plaid, and up here is this um, diamond, not plaid. And it's all the same, same treatment. Alright, the necklaces and the um, necklaces are dotted with the russet. Okay, and if you want to, use your ghostwriter or trace your pattern, whichever is fine. We have a necklace right there, so and his is on his neck, so I'll give him. And then we'll just apply dots close together. The russet. base the um, necklace in teal. And then do just a little swipe with the, the brighter turquoisey color. Got her little trim down here. I forgot to show you how to make that look pleated. And take the soft black um, color. And then you just pull some pleat lines on the chisel. That's how you get them to look like a little bit pleated. On the headbands, you add some khaki tan. I've got his going in a little side. Ooh, careful. That's what I did. Look at that. Uh, watch your dots are going to be wet. So if I have khaki tan, I go across. And then I go into my turquoise. And I give it that pattern right on top like it's a highlight. And hers gets like a jewel kind of dots. And watch her beads will also be wet. So she's got like it's beaded. And then she's got the dots on top. And we have to wait for those to dry to get them to really show. That works. Yeah, watery. Boop. Okay, how to make a great big fat mess. That's when you take your brush and you just line all of that mess right back off of there. And you try again. I had water in my ferrule that ran down my brush. That is always fun. Okay, so I'll try again. And we'll try again. Alright, the very first thing we're going to do to make our fringe is we're going to go into some milk chocolate with our program brush and we're going to pull down some fringe. 
It can come off the top of the, um, the piece of fabric that it's on. It can be different lengths. and says things like that because then we're going to go into cocoa and we're going to not worry about exactly where the cocoa hits it might be layered okay and I'm going to start making it kind of full it's kind of strong paint Okay, then we'll go into a little bit of desert sand and maybe not do it quite everywhere with desert sand and not quite as strong. Okay, then what we'll do is we're going to take our smaller, I have a smaller, I don't think I do have a smaller out here. Okay, so we'll take a small flat, number four, number six, something like that, in good condition. And we're going to go into our russet with a very tight, um, not floaty float. And we are going to oops, make it stronger, it's too much water. Make these little floats right here, like that's where the stuff would have been pulled through. Okay, and we'll repeat the same technique with a shorter fringe up here on his shoulders. All right, we'll get him on camera. We're going to skip the milk chocolate because he's got so much milk chocolate going on already, and we're going to make him shorter fringed. And we will pull it out. And that's just a slightly different look than she had. And then we'll do the same kind of stitching technique with a very dry float and a very sharp brush and a little bit to the angle. We're going to start talking about feathers here and the way we've got the feathers is we'll just sketch them on we'll give them a stem we'll get our little pro round out and our um, soft black I'm pretty sure soft black flatten the paint and we're just going to I've got a little hair on the end of here we'll just flatten our brush We'll just pull those feathers up and we'll give them just a variety of little patterns not worrying about right or wrong because I am certain that this is not completely right. Okay, same thing here. We have our little line coming up the middle. Let's see what we got here. We got the same, just maybe a little smaller. So I'll just make these be a little stripier. We have a little variety. Make sure they meet in the middle. And then this little fluff thing is just a fluff. And we'll just make that be dark like it's some other kind of feather. These little feathers are exactly the same way. These are totally different, so I won't talk about those right now. But when we look at our chick, she's got a dark feather and feathers with lines and that same kind of feather. So that's just a repeat. Now what we will do is we'll go into bleach sand and 
just to put the dirty brush on top of whoops on top of this color. And just increase the brightness of it just a little bit. Okay, and you do that to all the feathers. And then you'll shade to sink in the feathers at the top with some soft black, wherever they join into the thing. All right, I've mixed a little bit of Georgia clay and yellow ochre in my brush. I think that's Georgia clay, heritage brick. And I'm gonna do the pot with a highlight of those two colors. I'm gonna bring up a little bit more terracotta color. Now I'll go just yellow. that brush where it's behind your hands and stuff like that we don't need to worry about and now we're going to float with the heritage brick in the pot I need to find the pattern Let's see what that looks like what the pot is shaped like okay so I'm going to shape I'm going to do the shape of the pot that's going to give me a nice red cast And I'll do where it goes down behind her arm. Her hands trying not to make little chisel marks there. Do a lot of shading in there. And what the heck, we'll almost maybe glaze it all the way just to give it that, that warmness. Okay, then we're gonna highlight. We'll choose to highlight with um, cocoa. Now, so on this, on my pattern, this is the original um, line drawing that Dustin drew for me, and I've got this detail in here. And what I uh, tried to do was eliminate as much detail as I could that didn't need to be there, and that was one of them that um, I felt I could safely get by with. And we'll go into bleach sand. Oops, we'll go into desert sand first. And highlight that cocoa rim. And maybe even just a little hair of the bleached. And she's got some wheat that she's carrying. So the very first thing we'll do is we'll base it in some uh, milk chocolate <clears throat> to give it some body back there. Right, next I'm going to turn it so that it's coming so that I can get the wheat out of the, the little container. And I'm just going to do a series of choppy strokes showing just like sheaves of wheat. Now see we want to pull those out over her so that um, it shows that there's layers of things, you know what I'm saying? And I want it just sheaves and sheaves. She's just got that gathered in that bowl. Okay, and then down here at the ends, we're going to do some dots and down through in here to show like the wheat heads. Out over. Then we'll go into. Let's see, let's go into, do we have a little bit of the brighter yellow? Yeah, that's what I thought. We'll go into the yellow ochre first, because it's whiter. And we'll increase the dots. Okay, and then we'll go through and we'll increase some of the, the wheat themselves. And then we'll get a little bit of a cad yellow glimmer. I don't want to wait for that to dry. Sometimes the cad yellow, it needs to be really shaken up or it won't stick to things. And back 
there on the base. I'll take a little bit of russet and we'll shade that and maybe a little bit of soft black. Final highlight, final shade, sorry. And we could even bring some of that in if we wanted to. And that is what she is offering. Now we can take, I've got a little bit of the Heritage Brick worked into their clothes here and there. You could go and have a little bit on her neck. It just adds just a little bit more warmth. You could do it into the purple. If that's a color you like, smear it around. And that just adds just a little bit of something else going on that we like. Okay, we can give her a little varnish. I've got to shade her feathers in. See what happens when we just shade behind there, it just sinks them down. We'll give her a couple coats of varnish. And remember, if your kids are going to be playing with this and Thanksgiving table and all that kind of stuff, Varnish them very well, and I would even go to the step of waxing them because you're going to store them for a number of years. The wax will prevent them from sticking together. Um, it's just a good safety precaution. So there's our Indian princess. I've got a little bit more attention to do to what is happening on their edges. I want to make sure that they match. Um, I got as far as the purple, and then I gave up on the brown, so I'll go back and do those. I think let's go ahead and finish our Indian Chief so we'll have a match set. Okay, and we have this um, piece of stuff that is tied to, and I think it actually isn't ready to be done, so we'll skip her to his bow and to his um, shoes. I guess both of those need some stuff. They're going to go into the, the goldens, and we're going to, instead of um, shading them so much, we're going to highlight them. So I've got milk chocolate. Going right across his toe and where the top of his shoe is. And the same thing goes for his um, bow. He's getting... Shoop, let's back you back out a little bit right there next to the edge. And we'll go into a little bit of the um, cocoa. Just add some of that highlight to the bow thing. This thingy gets spaced with cocoa one more time. <clears throat> His shoes can be shaded with um, soft black. And they'll be shaded like the pants are going over and down the sides. You can shade on under where that grip is with soft black and under his hands with soft black. With milk chocolate, you can shade either side of the grip. And you can take your milk chocolate and line kind of straight across it, like it's tied with some kind of little rope kind of thing. And then yellow ochre right in the middle to increase the look of that. We'll come back in a few minutes and do the fruit in his hands and our arrows. I think we can probably do our arrows now. Um, 
what we've got is we've got a couple of um, V-shaped shapes there, and I'm not going to worry about what exactly is drawn or what exactly is traced or whatever like that. Okay, I want to go in and I want to say, okay, you're a V-shape, and then I want to say maybe you're a V-shape. Okay, and then I'll come bring something up from here and make it a V shape. Okay, and then from there we're going to go into our highlights and shade and stuff like that. So the very first thing we'll do is we use some black to line it so we don't lose our shapes. Then we'll this and go into like say milk chocolate. You can do, you know vary these any way you want to. That was wet and milk chocolate's not showing, so we'll go into cocoa. And we just want to give the impression of a couple of notched little feathery things going on back there and make them varied so that they don't sit one on top of each other and look all the same. <clears throat> can highlight the one in front so it's brighter. Okay, so people believe you if you have them at various, um, various kinds of colors and separated a little bit. So they don't all look like they're the same. There you go. Now you have a whole bunch of fletched little arrows. Okay, we're done here. We've got to get this done right here. Let's draw on his. We've got corn in the two men's arms. So I'm going to go ahead and trace my patterns for both of those um, on right now, and we'll paint them together. Okay, the little corns are real easy to do. We're going to use yellow ochre, and we're not going to stress about them. That's our mantra. We're going to put little dots with our brush of fairly thick paint in a fairly good kind of line, and then we're going to put a dot of brighter yellow over the top of them, however many dots you can get on there. And if it starts getting a little bit flattened of dots, go get fresh paint. They're just going to look like little lined up little kernels. And then um, I'll show you the next step in a second. Okay, and then we go with the brighter yellow on top of that, so it'll show. Let me just brighten them all up. I think I have to shake my yellow. It's not behaving very well. Then we'll take some of our Hauser medium green and we'll just stroke over the tips of these while that um, Yellow paint is drying. And then we'll take our Hauser dark green and we'll stroke from the back. By the way, this is a pop top. Um, I went, we've got some studio adjusting going, and I hired myself out a whole new set of paints. And all of them need to be cracked open. And the little pop top makes it super simple to do that. It just takes that plastic and rips it apart, just like you just saw. And then one of the things that we're absolutely digging are the labels for all the paints that have the numbers on them. And so you just stick them on top. So I'm going to go through and label all of these so that I can find them when I'm looking down into them with the, with the thing right on top. I can't believe how much I really rely on both of those things. Um, and it really just shows here as I've been dealing with all brand new paints. <clears throat> okay. So we'll reverse this, and from the base, oh yeah, not quite so heavy in paint, we'll just draw in just a little bit of a shadow. You could float that, but oh, that seems scary. There we go. And our little corns, then they get a little teeny bit of a shade with some russet. Okay, and hopefully I'm not, I'm going to do one of these that I haven't done the yellow on yet. Our little ears of corn. 
just get a little teeny shade just to tuck them down in there and pop them. Okay, we're going to base our pumpkin in the, yes, that color, Canyon Orange plus um, yellow ochre and make it just be a kind of a tannish, orangish kind of color. We'll get that based. Go right over that stem. The stem is just based with the green. I think you can follow the directions on that part. And we just want to be careful of where his hands are. It's the only bad part about having his hands done first, but base coating hands are really tricky. I'd rather avoid them than try to base coat them. Okay, we'll do the Indian right now. Um, we're going to take the same big round brush. It's the Easy Stroke brush. And we're going to take it watery Hauser um, dark green. And we're going to start out a little strong at the bottom. And we're going to squiggle. Squiggle and blot. Up from the squash. Okay, then we'll wipe our brush out and we'll go into have house of light out. I think I already have the house of light out. Go into house of light and mix a little bit of the um, cad yellow into it. And maybe a little bit more. Cad yellow is really not behaving very well today for me. And we'll cry because it's not working at all. Alright, now we shake. Yellow is notoriously bad about base coating and stuff, and I had already shaken it, but now we'll shake it a little bit more and hope we get some pigment out of that. So I'll bring this down, that's better already. Just squiggle in between. Okay, now he's got a little squash dude and I'll finish his corn. All right, one last little piece on our Indian man and we're going to take some soft black and we're going to go ahead and shade underneath his apron-y thing, whatever they're called. It's not really quite a loincloth, it's just a work cloth or something like that. <clears throat> and we're going to go into our desert sand and we're going to pull out some kind of fringe. You could have it be knotted. You could have it go even. Oops. And you want to keep it out of these little checks. And it's got a little bit of the tealy color, Bahama blue in it. And it's got a little tealy. This apron. Then we can take the heritage brick color, and just like what we did with her, we can give him a little bit of some reds. Bring some some extra little life to them. Okay, and so we'll just shade both sides, and so I'll just go back and do a little flip float moment right there, and we're going to do the outside of that as well. His fingers. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and we're going to hope that's dry and just give it a little bit of yellow in the sections. On his stem, you take just your um, dark green. 
So I want to keep this as detailed as possible without making us crazy. That's why we're not going crazy over every little thing on these. We want to keep them simple, but we want to keep it like, like, oh yeah, that's corn. You know, so not, not crazy, just a little crazy. You could take a little bit of that yellow that's not behaving and you could go on some of his little ears of corn and stuff. Just to perk them up. Okay, we have some highlighting to do down here on his Yeah, didn't wash that brush. And this gun will go into milk chocolate. And we'll milk chocolate it. Then we'll go into cocoa. And cocoa it. We can go into his gun stock up here and give it a little kiss of the same color. I'm trying to keep that nondescript as well. Um, we don't have buttons. Let's see what else do we have. Oh, we've got buckles. Buckles, buckles. Who's got the buckles? Okay, they are going to be based with milk chocolate. Can be gold buckles. I think he's got some shoes as well. to Coco. And you just give yourself just a little bit of a highlight. Down the shoes. And go into um, yellow ochre for the final shines. This is that contrast thing. You have to make sure that you can see things. So like that's a dark area. I have to make sure that I use a, a color that will not fade into that. Okay, so we've got gun, we've got buckles. I think we are done with Mr. Pilgrim. Okay, on her cornucopia, she's got corn and a, and a gourd just like the other Indians, so I'm not going to repeat showing that, but I will show you the grapes are based with grape juice and then a little bit of um, bleach sand mixed in for a couple of little highlights. All right, now we need to deal with Miss Cornucopia Basket. We're going to go into milk chocolate and see if that shows up. It's not going to. We're going to go into cocoa. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a series of just little S strokes or C strokes, whichever you're comfortable with. Leave space in between so they show. And then you'll go into desert sand and you'll give them a little highlight. Oops. You can even make it a little strong highlight coming out of there. I kind of like that. I think 50% of painting is just serendipity. Okay, so that's our woven, get you on there, sorry, basket. And now we'll go over here, and what we're going to do is we're going to flatten out our little flat, our little round brush. And we're going to make a stroke, a stroke, a stroke, a stroke. We're going to go back, and we're going to make a stroke, a stroke, in between them. Then we'll come across and do the next stroke over the top of that stroke. We'll come back, do the straight strokes, reload our brush, and just make this pattern all the way down the cornucopia. Now I'm going to have to turn here. Make sure your paint stays down at the base of your brush and not climbing up out of your brush, out of the ferrule. that pattern to the end. There you go. And then you'll highlight just a little bit. It's not the most perfect 
ask it ever, but it gives you the impression, and once again, we are not trying to make ourselves lose our minds with the amount of detail. Yeah, I would like to lose my mind trying to keep the camera and my piece together. Okay, now I'm going to wash these with just a little bit of something warm on the palette. I'll use, um, yes, and the name of the paint is Russet. Just sink that in. Make it warm. Okay, and just we'll take a little bit of soft black and give it that kind of shaded down look. Tuck a little bit of that there. You can have a little bit of that soft black going in where things aren't full inside. I'm not quite done with my corn, but I would say, oops, we got some wheat to do. Sorry about that. So we'll take our milk chocolate, and we'll just bring this out. I'll fill that in right there. Bring out some stalks of wheat. And that's not going to show because... And then bring out some yellows, and then just make that be spotty and choppy and wonderful. Okay, now she gets a little bit of deepening, if you would like to, um, here and there. And so you could bring down a little bit darker, make her kind of belong a little better together. With all of your pieces, don't be afraid to go back and give them a little bit of adjusting. She could also have some little hints of the red, the heritage brick. Here and there. Oops, let me drag it out again. Just to give her just a little bit more warmth. She could be a little deeply or shaded under her apron and arms. We have some gathers if we wanted them. Okay, we've got colonial green out, and I've got my big round brush. And I want to show you how we get that streaky kind of over the top fade into the neck. We're just going to kind of dry brush that down his neck in a shape following motion and dry off our brush a little bit. And then that just gives it that fade. So you can tell where one kind of starts and one kind of begins. We're going to shade on our back lower feathers, whatever they're called, <clears throat> with russet. Oops, and stay out of my wet paint. Maybe not such a wide float. Wasn't a float at all, I don't think. And then go back to back. Ah. So see the condition of my fingers right there? That's when you have to start. You either stop and go wash your hands. I've been sitting here painting for quite some time. Stop and go wash your hands or quit blotting your project with your fingers. They are the perfect mops though. Float that. We'll float around his little head there. All right. Then we're going to take soft black. I'm going to go up one side. Just to define. And we'll 
will take a very strong russet and we're going to, you know, it's russet, I'm sure of it, but mine in this case is not showing as well as I want it to. And just lay that down over the top of those feathers. And I get a little bit of a highlight with our typical, and we're going to use our dry brush. And we're going to go cocoa. Through the middle there. And we can repeat cocoa if we feel we need to. Alright, we'll do some magic stuff to his beak and all that area. We're going to go into russet. And we're going to base or shade under these areas where they're under and then around the outer area. Around the base. Oops, a little extension there. We're going to take a little bit of black and a really soft float. And we're going to float over the top of his head. And then we're going to give him just a little under his chin. We'll highlight with the Bahama Blue. Oh, and I actually have some out still. Okay, we're going to use our um, Bahama Blue to highlight that. And what's our highlight? We don't really have a highlight on that. Our beak is cocoa and then we're just going to take a little bit of the, the yellow um, ochre and make that shine on in. We'll take a little bit of our thinned black and I'm just going to put a little eye right there. This brush has been holding water like a dream all day, right when I don't want it to. Okay, Pinching out just a little bit more. And we're going to take burnt umber, which is dried and gone. So we've got our piece that is sealed and ready to go here and we're going to take out what we're going to do is we're going to base it all on the orange color and then we'll just go in and trim with the black. So the orange color being Heritage Brick. It's going to be our orange color for the day. And you, the, it's the same prep for either or. And I'm going to use this very special little sash brush to get this done. load the paint and then I'm just going to stipple all around and it doesn't make everything crazy moving. You want generous paint but not too much or it ends up real textury. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll get it dry and I'll do my other side. While you've got this messy, you definitely want to do both sides. Even if you don't in ever intend, if you don't intend to show it on both sides, do the back side in black. Wait for it to dry and then finish this and then touch up in the black. Black's always easier to touch up. Okay, so we'll let that dry and then um, I'll show you how to do the top detail. Okay, now that I've got that based and I have a lovely pattern, and by the way, the nonstick mat just makes it super easy for that stuff to come off. I'm going to use my crescent brush and I'm going to use canyon orange and I'm just going to catch the tips and I'm going to kind of almost stipple the tips 
of the letters and then I'm going to pull it down dry. And I'll probably repeat it one time just to brighten it up a little bit. You can decide how much you want. And if you wanted to, it might be really pretty to glaze a little bit of the red, um, the deep burgundy down at the bottom of your letters. Um, this is my finished one. Let's, let's give it a try. And I'll look for... Now that just gives it kind of a little bit more depth. Excuse me, a little hiccup there. And so depending on how you feel your piece rests, then you might decide from there. I tried it with some polka dots, which you can kind of see hiding right here. I didn't like that very much. And you might even could, might could, might could, <clears throat> bring it just a little bit. No, I don't think the yellow would be a good choice because that would make it be too bright and too bold there. But I think the red might be a really nice touch. On the letters, I highly recommend going ahead and just investing in a can of spray paint. You want to do a matte finish, um, depending on what you like. But um, because of how many different angles and grooves and things like that that they have, um, taking these outside, setting it on a bush, spraying it so that you get in between and stuff, and then waiting until it's dry, flipping it over. Um, bushes are a really nice thing to use only because um, there's no... Um, you can spray onto them. They're going to lose that leaf anyway. Anyway, you get where I'm going with that. And there's no sticking points. So it's a really something I learned in a seminar somewhere. All right, we'll take our burnt umber and we're going to make these feathers have some definition. Use it that way. It's on the inside. Start giving swoops. Everywhere where there's swoops on the pattern, you make the little swoops. So all of these guys right here. So they'll just be swoop, swoop, little C strokes. Okay, and you'll fill the breast with that. Got one last little set of feathers. Okay, and we'll shade them with burnt umber after I dry my brush out. I'll go shade, 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 down both sides, which will make them be kind of self-highlighting. And I'm not really paying very much. It's like a glaze float. Kind of deal. We'll go into our little round brush. Is that black or soft black? It's black. Okay. And then we're going to make a series of strokes down the feathers. I thought the feathers would be a lot more intimidating um, to make them look kind of feathery, and they haven't been as bad as I thought. So, okay, and there's our turkey bird. And he's got, oh, that little feather down there is brown. And he needs to be highlighted, or, um, that is burnt number down here. I think we could use a little more yellow on. His feet will go into... Too much. A little bit more into the yellow ochre. And then once that's based with black down there, it'll be a totally different experience. Well, I'm very proud of myself for doing both sides because I think that that is going to be just awesome to have as a double-sided centerpiece for my dining room table. I hope that you've enjoyed. I know it's been a little bit more monotonous than normal just because there's not... There's just a couple of basic techniques and you just repeat until you're done. So I hope you've enjoyed. I love the piece and I'm going to treasure it for always.